Millennium Physician Group Radio, brought to you by Millennium Physician Group, your connection to a healthier life. Join us for a healthcare journey as we work together to achieve the best health outcome for you. Welcome to Millennium Physician Group Radio. I'm Michelle McCormick. Today, our conversation is about oral health. So many things that start with our mouths. You would not believe it. Our ability to speak, eat, and smile all depend on our mouth. We're going to talk with a local dentist about the connection between oral health and the health of your entire body. But first, Millennium Physician Group is one of the largest physician groups in Florida with over 150 offices in the state. Right here in Northeast Florida, we have 50 primary care providers to take care of you. Find an office near you at millenniumphysician.com. We also just opened our first walk-in medical center in Jacksonville. The center offers extended hours during the week and on Saturdays to help with your primary care and acute care needs. It's at Atlantic and Hodges. Millennium Physician Group is your connection to a healthier life. Join us right now for a healthcare journey as we work together to achieve the best health outcome for you. Brush your teeth. Who didn't hear that growing up and what parent still doesn't say it? I say it all the time, even to my grown children. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the website says, and I found this so amazing, that the baby boomer generation is the first where the majority of people will keep their natural teeth over their entire lifetime. We're going to learn a lot about our oral health today. Our guest today is a local dentist who grew up in a dentist family. Dr. Michelle Huckey is the owner of Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry located in Neptune Beach. And we're going to learn so much today, Dr. Michelle, about dentistry and the importance of it with our health. But first, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I think... very passionate about dentistry, and so I'm happy to be here to share. Well, I'm excited to learn how our mouths are really an indicator of a lot of other things going on in our bodies. So I think it's super important. But first of all, let's let's talk about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am. Uh, I come by dentistry honestly. My dad is a dentist, and he and I were partners for 12 years. I'm from Western New York, so I was a dentist. I had the pleasure of being a dentist in my small hometown um, in a partnership with my dad. And then I met my husband in the Bahamas on vacation, and he's from the Jacksonville area. He's also a dentist. So I had the pleasure of working with him for about eight years in St. Augustine. And then I bought this practice at Neptune Beach. And so now I'm here. Well, that that's great. Um, the, the whole dentistry family, I bet you guys have uh, have perfect teeth. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. My dad and my husband are both really good dentists. So I, I would say the, the most awesome thing about being in that environment is just that I had really good mentors. And so I, I feel very blessed. Well, yeah. very important. One of my biggest bragging um, fun facts is that I don't have any cavities and um, oh, yeah. I'm super proud of that. <laughs> it makes my oh, husband right. absolutely crazy and my ex-husband absolutely crazy because my two children also have perfect teeth. So, you know, right. the perfect teeth family. It is. They didn't get the eyes, but, you know, I, I'm happy with their teeth because I, I did say earlier in the show that the um, baby boomers are going to be one of the first generation where they'll keep their natural teeth uh, compared to generations before. So I found that interesting from the CDC website. Yeah, absolutely. The, thankfully, right, the rate of tooth loss um, has gone down. Uh, however, we we are still seeing a pretty high rate of decay with um, the kiddos coming up. Unfortunately, sad to say, you know, dental dental disease is still our number one childhood illness. And we're seeing 35, I think the latest statistic is 35% of kids under the age of three have cavities. Uh, I used to never take uh, x-rays on three and four year olds when I first started practicing, especially because, you know, we have a pretty high level of fluoride in my hometown. But now we, there, as, as soon as we can get x-rays in kids' mouths, we take them now. And unfortunately, we, a lot of times we see decay. So That is crazy. That young and... Um... And, and that is that is bothersome, I'm sure, for for you yeah. and your practice. Uh, what I, I think we can say candy. I mean, what else is the cause of that? It is a lot of it is sipping and snacking. Um, we have a tendency in our society currently to feel like we have to carry snacks around for our kids all the time. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of snacking and sipping, a lot of pushback about fluoride especially fluoride in the water. So in a lot of communities, it's being taken out of the water. Um, so yeah, that's why the, the 
ADA and the AMA got together and the new guideline for when kids are supposed to come to the dentist first is at age one. And really the main reason for that is to begin nutrition counseling as early as possible. And for people that are, you know, that embrace fluoride, right? We want to start fluoride treatments as early as possible so that, you know, we can do everything we can to prevent that decay. Baby teeth, baby teeth, it's a tough subject. I mean, a lot of people think that they're, you know, they're, it's not a big deal to get a cavity on a baby tooth, but many of your baby teeth you have until you're 11 or 12 years old. And if they get decay in them and it's undiagnosed, it can be really painful. So that is staggering. Um, honestly, you know, I grew up or my kids grew up in Jacksonville beach and, and we do have fluoride in our water. And it was always one of those, you know, go brush your teeth with, with the tap water, which nothing's wrong with the tap water. And, and even our pediatrician encouraged that, you know, using the tap water to mix with, to dilute apple juice and stuff as the kids were growing up just because of the fluoride. So I find, I find that very interesting that even at that young age, I think maybe a lot of the misconception might be that baby teeth fall out. So yeah. what's a cavity in a tooth that's going to fall out? Yeah. No, it's really important that they stay in there and obviously important that they get examined. And, you know, that's what holds the place for the permanent teeth. So, yeah, we like to see our kiddos really young, um, partly because of juice use and snacking, really. Yeah. So why do you think people, Dr. Michelle, um, hate going to the dentist? <laughs> you know, it's it's it, from a very young age of one uh, to 100, uh, you know, it's very important to get our, our mouths inspected for our overall health. Why do you think uh, people are afraid of that? Yeah, that's a broad subject. I would say in Florida, you know, the main reason that people have a cha- who have challenges coming in is that, you know, if they're in their 70s, 80s, 90s, they had really bad experiences as kids, there was, there was almost no way to avoid it, especially in their eighties and nineties, because those dentists didn't use Novocaine. Novocaine didn't work. The the actual Novocaine didn't work very well. It was very allergenic. The needles really hurt. And so the dentists just stopped using it. Um, They weren't not using Novocaine because they were sadists or masochists. Uh, they didn't use it because it didn't work. And even if they put it in there, a lot of times it created anaphylactic shock in the patient. Wow. So that is why dentistry was done without any no cane back then. There were no high speed drills. So dentistry was just, you know, it was just horrible. And so when people have really bad childhood experiences, they don't continue to come. <laughs> Um, they don't, they, they relive that. And so it's hard for them to push past that anxiety. Now, the one thing I will tell anybody out there that's listening that had a bad childhood experience, especially if it had to do with that, you know, not getting numb, our new anesthetics, you know, I've been a dentist for 30 years because I started when I was 12. Um, (laughs) um, our new anesthetics are one of the top five things that have significantly changed for me in that 30 year period. Um, It is, I mean, unless someone has a severe infection or some unusual thing going on with their tooth, it is very unusual to not be able to get a tooth profoundly numb, which you you couldn't even say that really 15 years ago. So that's really good, that's the good news about dentistry. It's, It's come a long way in terms of being painless. And then we also have a lot of great, you know, pre medications that you can take, like we have a, a a pill you can take that's like, a, I always say, it's like a strong Valium. Obviously, we have laughing gas. So, you know, there's all different things that we can do to make it comfortable. And then the second thing, you know, is always, oh, it's expensive. Now, nothing right now is inexpensive, in my opinion, even going to the grocery store. Right. Um, but we have lots of different ways to make it affordable. And also most of the time people's perception of how horrible or extensive their treatment is, is overblown in their mind, especially if they've been putting it off for a long time. Right. Because they have themselves all geared up. They might have an anxiety and then they develop in their mind, this irrational, you know, excuse me, <clears throat> summary of what is probably going on for them. And it's not always realistic, so. 
Yeah, I can I can totally understand that. And now I know, um, you know, you, you have sunglasses so that the light's not so bright. You have televisions up in the ceilings in some cases. So the the whole experience seems a little more pleasant uh, o- out overall. But I know um, at, with you guys, Dr. Michelle of Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry, that um, you do like a complete health, almost complete health check for your patients when they come in. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's something that we started. We're going into our fourth year. I've been, as I said already, <laughs> doing this for 30 years. And so I was really interested in doing something in my profession that was value added and therefore, you know, more interesting to me also. Right. But, um, it really hit me that we have such amazing relationships with our patients because we see them three to four times a year. Most of the time, you know, if people, once people get over the age of 40, they want to keep their teeth for a lifetime. They usually have a certain amount of gum disease. We generally recommend they come in every three to four months. And we really can't say that about most healthcare practitioners. I can't really think of any that see their patients that consistently. And so we do now do a really extensive medical history. We take a blood pressure every patient every time. We go over now. We're not trying to take the place of physician. Right, right. Of course. I don't want to be a physician. No. Bless bless physician. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) So that is not the goal. The goal is to work in concert with, right, and support their medical care because we take such an extensive medical history and they talk to us um, about what's going on with them medically. So a lot of things that to a patient, you know, don't seem like a big deal in terms of a change in between their medical visits really is a big deal. And, you know, we know enough about medicine where we can, you know, point out to them, okay, so you're on this reflux medication and now, you know, it's flaring up again, even though you're taking the medicine or all of a sudden they have a dry mouth. Well, obviously the dry mouth impacts us, but these are all things that are important for their physician to know about and sometimes know about in a timely fashion. And they really wouldn't know about it because patients don't have a tendency to want to call anybody. Right. It's true. It's very true. Is there um, a specific like direction you can take patients if they have, let's say like a bad breath all the time that is that caused by medication or a different type of illness? Can you tell if someone's having health issues just from their breath? Well, you know, I mean, a lot of times it has, it's related to their, you know, sugar issues. Um, Sometimes it's just because they're on multiple medications and their mouth's gotten dry. Obviously the first thing that we screen for, especially if it's been a while since they've been to the dentist is whether it's coming from gum issues. We do have, we, I would say of the things that we're most passionate about, um, the health of the gums is one of them. You know, if people have high blood pressure, if they have sleep apnea, if they have diabetes, you don't want gum inflammation in their mouth. If they have a family history of dementia, the first thing you want to do is aggressively get rid of every speck of inflammation in their mouth. And so we have a sort of like a three-tiered approach to that, especially if they have underlying health issues. We do bacterial testing first if we know that they need scaling and root planning. That's really what a deep cleaning is called in our lingo. (laughs) Um, They have a lot, if if they need that level of care, they have a lot of bacteria and a lot of stuff up underneath their gums. If we just get them numb and do the scaling like we used to, even four or five years ago, we're shoving all of that into their bloodstream. It's the reason that if people have a valve replacement, they're supposed to take antibiotics ahead of time. But Rather than just do that, we bacterial test them first so that we see exactly what bacteria are in their microbiome. And then we also pre-treat them with uh, trays, special trays, they're called perio protect trays. And we put a 1.7% hydrogen peroxide gel in there. It's like a hyperbaric chamber for their tissue. And that way we are being careful about what we're introducing into their system, especially if they have heart issues, especially if they have a history of a stroke, especially if they have 
you know, any sort of pre-existing conditions. It's not really fair to the patient to make that worse. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is, that is extensive. How long does (laughs) that treatment take? Well, the, you know, and uh, well, a lot of times what we, what we want to do, honestly, when we're doing the scaling and root planning, rather than drag it out like we used to in multiple visits, is we want to just do it one time. So we do the testing, wait for those results. We um, order their treatment trays, have them use those a couple times a day for two to three weeks, again, to disturb that microbiome. And then in one day, we um, scale the whole mouth. And then, the, you know, the trays are something that they use at home for life. Okay. All right. Well, we are talking with Dr. Michelle Huckey from Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry about the importance of keeping our mouths clean. And coming up next, we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Michelle. So stick around. The conversation will continue. Millennium Physician Group Radio will return right after this. Welcome back to Millennium Physician Group Radio. I'm Michelle McCormick. Thank you for tuning in today. We are learning all about our oral health and how that really relates to a lot of our entire overall health. Joining us today is Dr. Michelle Huckey of Jack's Beach's Family Dentistry. And Dr. Michelle, we were we were just talking about um, some of the health you know effects that that our teeth and mouths and gum disease can not support, but it, it's all kind of related and how you take a thorough history of people when they come into your office. But a big one that, that I saw when I was researching was about sleep apnea. Now, a lot of people might relate sleep apnea to snoring. You know, uh, like my husband, can I, he like stops breathing at night and I have to kind of push him to remind him to breathe, you know, but how is our mouth, how does this fit in? Well, I can barely breathe just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, the way the reason it fits in is that dentists are experts at the tongue and where it belongs and how it fits into the arch. So more and more, our training is in relation to the airway because we work in the space of the airway. And we actually have almost complete control over the airway because the position of the tongue and where it lies relates to the teeth, the bite, your jaw, and the shape of the arches. So dentists are um, really participating hand in hand with multiple different practitioners to alleviate sleep apnea issues. Now, you know, most people have, you know, have different levels of airway restrictions. Um, The most, you know, the most passionate thing that I have in terms of sleep apnea is when someone is very symptomatic they're tired, their partner knows they're gasping for air, they're snoring, and they're beginning to get things like acid reflux, high blood pressure, the high cholesterol. And then the next thing, unfortunately, is heart attack, stroke, and dementia. And it makes me almost want to cry because there's really no reason to continue to wander down that road. If you have primary snoring, you are at risk for all of those things later in life. Um, And as a society, we have just been ignoring that. So it's exciting that as a dentist that we can positively impact that in people's lives. And Dr. Michelle, how do you how do you go about that? I mean, I know I clench at night, uh, I grind like with some TMJ, but how do you move a tongue out of the airway? (laughs) Well, the tongue position is controlled by the upper and lower dental arches and old time orthodontics generally pulled those arches back. So when I was a kid, for example, I'm a really good example of it. I had quote unquote buck teeth. And so they used a headgear, right? To pull that all back to resolve the buck teeth and get rid of the overbite. Um, The problem is you take your tongue and your palate and you shove it in the airway. And so we have a CT scan machine that's amazing. And we can see the upper and lower arches and see if they're constricted, see where exactly where the palate and tongue are, and then begin to discuss how to either, depending on the patient's preference, right, temporarily hold the jaw forward to get the tongue out of the airway. We also have laser treatment that allows us to plump up and positively impact the palate, so the soft palate, so that it shrinks up and tightens up and gets rid of that snoring. Um, also helps air get down the airway. 
Um, and then we have other appliances, the appliance that I'm in right now, that not only holds my jaw forward, but it begins to sh change the shape of the upper and lower arch so that the tongue, right, along with a myofunctional therapist, ends up out of the airway and in the proper position. Wow. So that is that is crazy intense because a lot of people think they need the, the CPAP machine or, uh, you know, something a little that, that they're connected to all night and they end up throwing it off. And, and maybe it can all be, you know, healed through your your dentist. That that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to come back in just a minute with Dr. Michelle Huckey and continue the conversation. So you're definitely going to want to stick around. Millennium Physician Group Radio will return right after this. Welcome back to Millennium Physician Group Radio. I'm Michelle McCormick. Today, our conversation is about oral health. So many things start with our mouths. Our ability to speak, eat, and smile definitely depend on our mouths. We're going to talk now, continuing our conversation with a local dentist, about the connection between our oral health and the health of our entire body. Our guest is local dentist. Her name is Dr. Michelle Huckey. She's the owner of Jack's Beach Family Dentistry, located in Neptune Beach. And thank you for continuing the conversation with us today, Dr. Michelle, um, I, I, I'm still, we, we took a little break there and we talked a little bit more about the airway and um, I'm, I'm so getting my husband to the dentist as soon as possible to help with yeah. His snoring. Yeah, snoring is funny. Um, people think of it as like this embarrassing thing or they think it's um, just something that's funny, but even primary snoring is, is really detrimental to your health, mostly because nasal breathing is so important for your health. Mm -hmm. If you're snoring and mouth breathing all night, you're not making any nitric oxide, which is really important for your cardiovascular health. So, and really, you know, 60 to 70% of the time, if you're snoring, you have an airway restriction. Now, it doesn't mean you have full blown sleep apnea, no, and it's still a concern. And the same with clenching and grinding. Yeah. So I had TMJ or I have TMJ and I, I was in a, like a mouthpiece for a while and just to stop it just the movement of the jaw and my jaw still clicks a little bit now. And I wear a mouthpiece because I know I, I clench when I sleep. I don't have um, sleep apnea or any snoring issues, but I know I clench. And then I feel my jaw popping. Um, is, is, is something like that easily fixed? Yeah. And it's often related to an airway restriction, actually. Um, the main reason that you move your jaw around, this is what we're finding, is that um, your airway gets restricted and you move your jaw around to open it back up and it just becomes a habit. But yeah, it's mostly an airway habit. Okay. That, that is very interesting. Um, other habits, maybe, um, biting the inside of your mouth, um, it, you know, the gums, you know, you see people biting fingernails. Um, you know, how do you, how do you break habits or, or recommend breaking habits that have to do with, with the, with the mouth region? They're mostly airway habits. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, mostly our airway treatment and diagnosis, taking CT scans, taking, you know, screening people for, we have a home sleep test device where so we can screen people. Even um, we have our brand new one is pediatric uh, certified. So our kiddos um, are really going to benefit from this knowledge that we have about getting the arches, upper and lower arches, the right shape and getting the tongue in the right position, along with our myofunctional therapists that we work with. Because that's a main reason that kids bite their fingernails is because they're not breathing. <laughs> that is fascinating to me. I think yeah. you, you've just opened a whole new like uh, <laughs> like direction. That, that... And, yeah, and it's the reason you end up with a, a sore jaw. Okay. All right. Well, that's something I, I'll come visit you in the office for, for sure. So Dr. Michelle, let's talk about some, um, some other relatively uh, common things with our, with our mouth and teeth, uh, hot and cold sensitivity. I know this is a big issue for some folks. Uh, like ice makes your teeth just hurt and hot can do the same. Uh, and there's toothpaste out there that, that help. What do you tell your patients? Well, individual teeth that are sensitive often are cracked. So people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, um, a lot of those individuals have big, old, especially silver fillings, right? And when you chew on those teeth over time, you en end up with micro fractures or sometimes pretty big fractures in them. So if this is a very good message for anybody that's listening, whenever you have an individual tooth that you're aware of, whether it's hot, cold, biting or you just have a mild awareness it's really important right away to 
let your dentist know and to have it checked. Because if we catch it early and it's a fracture that we can support with a crown, a lot of times we can head off the need for something like a root canal. Okay. So individual tooth sensitivity is, is really different from sort of general tooth sensitivity. A lot of times people have generalized tooth sensitivity from recession over time, which is usually from clenching and grinding, which a lot of times is from an airway issue. <laughs> or they have had gum disease off and on over time, and um, they have recession from that. So they had like a deep cleaning, and then it flares up again, and then they have another deep cleaning, and the, you know, the bone erodes away over time. So that's the other reason that we're really you know, sort of assertive about gum treatment. So we don't want to see people have to go through that. Right. It sounds extremely painful. Can toothpaste help? Yeah. Sensodyne is one of the best things ever invented other than sliced bread and fluoride, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Sensodyne is awesome. It has a chemical in it that helps, you know, what happens is your gums are seed and instead of just enamel being exposed to your mouth, the roots are exposed and that root surface is sensitive and it has a chemical in it that works really well to help um, block that sensation. So it's a really good product. And is Sensodyne something you can use every day or when you're feeling extra sensitive? I use it um, periodically. Personally, I use the those perio protect trays I was talking about earlier to treat my gum issues because I have significant gum issues. And so I occasionally get sensitive, a lot like people that bleach periodically and they get sensitive from that. So I use Sensodyne episodically, you know. Okay. But a lot of people use it, you know, that's their toothpaste and they use it a couple times a day and it works really, it's a, it's a great product. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something that I wanted to touch on too, bleaching. So, you know, I, I am very guilty of drinking a lot of coffee. Um, I do like tea as well. Um, I like chocolate. So, you know, over time you lose uh, the coloration and, and maybe at times they even look a little yellow. Um, bleaching. Are we hurting our teeth? through bleaching. No, definitely not. Um, bleaching is again, one of those amazing products. It was actually, it's interesting. It was found when people were treating gum disease with peroxide. Um, that's how it was discovered. They were like, Oh, look at this. The teeth are getting white too. So I've used all different products. I'm a dentist. I've been a dentist for 30 years, as I mentioned before. So I've used many different products for me personally and for a lot of my patients. It's hard to, especially because, you know, we're not going to stop living our lives like you just mentioned. It's hard to get your teeth white and keep them white. Um, so there's in-office product. We have a great in-office product. It's like 40 minutes, very inexpensive. A lot of people do it every time they get their teeth cleaned. It's got you know, trays, you don't have to do a lot of isolation, like some of the systems, and it has a light. Okay. Um, that works, it works well. I will say for me personally, they, I finally, for the first time in my life, have white teeth because of using the Perio Protect trays every single day. Okay. So I put 1.7% hydrogen peroxide gel in a tray every day for 15 minutes, and my teeth stay white. My breath has never been as good as it is. And my gum disease is gone. So. Wow. So threefold right there. Right. It's a threefer. <laughs> we are talking with Dr. <laughs> Michelle Huckey from Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry located in Neptune Beach. What is the difference, Dr. Michelle, between a crown and a cap? Um, I don't have either. Like I said earlier, I have no cavities, so I can't even begin to experience what that would feel like in my mouth. Yeah. A crown and a cap are the same thing. It's just two different words. Um we in the dental profession call it a crown, and then patients usually refer to them as caps. Um, they are porcelain coverings to your teeth. Gener there's really two different reasons that they're done. Sometimes they're done for aesthetic reasons. So people have dark teeth, they have spotted teeth, they have stained teeth, and they don't like the way they look. So we put a thin layer of porcelain, sometimes they're called veneers, over the teeth just to change the shape of the teeth the color of the teeth just to make the teeth prettier and then the majority of the time they're done because of what i was talking about earlier that you know people had really big especially silver fillings right done when they were teenagers and 20 years later they're breaking down there's they're getting new decay around them they're getting fractures and there's not much left of the top part of the tooth so we 
you have to wrap a crown all the way around the tooth to band it together, hold it together, and keep those fractures from getting worse, and allowing people to chew on them without more of the tooth breaking. Mm-hmm. Is a root canal the final like help for a tooth? Um, a root canal is something that's done, again, for a couple of reasons. If that fracture that I was just talking about gets into the nerve, that tooth will get sensitive to cold or hot, like we were talking about in the other segment. And that usually means that they're, the fracture is connected to the nerve and the nerve is going to die. And so we clean out the nerve tissue and do a root canal. And then we also put the, put a crown on it to keep it from splitting. Okay. All right. Um, nerve really was there Um to help the tooth form. So it's not necessary anymore. Um, So doing a root canal just cleans out that tissue that's going to die and cause a toothache so that the person can keep the tooth. Okay. Dr. Michelle Huckey is the owner of Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry. Do you do um, dentures in your office, Dr. Michelle? We do. um, We do all different kinds of dentures. So um, sometimes people get to the point right where they, their teeth, are either loose from gum disease or they've had so much decay over time that it's just no longer possible to hold on to the teeth. We take the teeth out and then we can either make them traditional dentures where the dentures are just supported by the bone and the tissues in their mouth. And then we also have a periodontist that's a gum specialist that comes into our office. He's amazing. And he, he not only takes teeth out and does bone grafting, but he puts implants in. So we can do implant supported dentures that allows people to have their dentures not move around and they can put more force and chew more effectively. Um, and then we also do the procedure that is sometimes referred to as teeth in a day. Ooh. And that is <laughs> bridge work that uh, the day that teeth are extracted, uh, temporary bridges go in top and bottom. And so they come in with teeth and they leave with teeth. Okay you know, supported by the implants. And yeah. then we make, we make them permanent bridges that stay in and we're the only ones that take them out. Okay. So that's, that's dentistry coming a long way as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that would well, be number three, I think, on my list. Right. Ex- exactly. <laughs> and we'll, we'll get to our top three takeaways in the next segment. But um, so Dr. Michelle, what else um, do you do at, in your office, uh, your Jack's Beaches family dentistry office? I know, um, you know, you're, you're taking blood pressures, you're doing complete health checks. What else do you perform in office? Um, you mean in terms of the complete health? I would say the other really big thing is the, uh, is the home sleep tests and the, you know, and the sleep apnea treatment and sort of Mm co-diagnosis. And we also have uh, our amazing CT scan. So we're able to look at the upper airway and I have a great relationship with a couple of EMTs in town. So if we are talking to people and they're, you know, constantly congested and they can only breathe out of one nostril and, you know, it's been going on and on and on. You know, when, when we pull up the CT, we can see that they have septum issues or they're contra or constricted or, you know, so we're, we're just facilitating, you know, a lot of times what the patient already knows, but, you know, it's like a lot of things. If they can see it, I can see it. It motivates them Mm -hmm. to take care of it. And like I mentioned before, Breathing through your nose is super important for your overall health. <laughs> breathing through your mouth is not a good thing. Okay. I love it because, uh, you know, the mouth breathing in the dry mouth and, and everything, it's, it's just not comfortable. It's not good for you either. It, and it's not good for you either. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up in our, our final segment, we are going to wrap up our conversation with Dr. Michelle Huckey of Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry. And we're going to talk about the top three takeaways from today. So you're going to want to stick around. The conversation will continue. Millennium Physician Group Radio will return right after this. Welcome back to Millennium Physician Group Radio. I'm Michelle McCormick. Our conversation today has been all about oral health and how it affects your overall health. Really great conversation. Learned something new today. Joining me is Dr. Michelle Huckey. She is with Jack's Beaches Family Dentistry located in Neptune Beach, Florida. And uh, really important stuff, Dr. Michelle. I I mean, honestly, my daughter just had deviated septum surgery last week. And um, she literally had a shelf in her nose. But I now want to take her following the surgery to see the dentist and really just make sure there's nothing else causing all her issues. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I would say the top three things that have really changed for me, especially since we started the complete health um, journey that we're on, is the focus on airway. You know, I did a lot of work with TMJ pain because I was I was also a TMJ patient, and back then it was all about the bite, and now everything in dentistry is about the airway because it's important that we respect the airway and that the airway comes first, and that allows us to give patients relief that have been struggling for years and told because medically they are okay and they don't really qualify for a CPAP machine. Um, so we, we have the ability to do some things for them to help them. And then the other thing is just, you know, dental, dental decay being our number one childhood disease and being really respectful and encouraging of patients to come in when they're one so that we can talk about nutrition and things that we can modify early to keep people from suffering. Um, it's really, it's really important. And then, you know, the third thing is that dentistry is, you know, it's tough. It's tough for people to face doing, but we can make things really affordable. We have amazing ways to, to spread out either the dentistry itself or the payments. And then, you know, you, you generally are building up in your mind more about what it's really going to be than it is. So that's really important for people to keep in mind. It's yep. always going to be easier, better, less uncomfortable the sooner we do it and you're generally making a bigger deal out of it than it actually is. So. Well, and I think it's important that you, you kind of want to keep your teeth. You know, um, you know, we I mentioned it at the very beginning of the show that the baby boomers right now are going to be the first generation to hold on to the majority of their teeth. And that's because of the advances in, in dentistry and maybe even toothpaste and fluoride and, and everything that we really touched on today. Yeah, and if we're going to keep our teeth, though, we do have to really keep a close eye on gum and gum inflammation. We really used to think that it wasn't a big deal for our gums to bleed, but now we know that it causes cardiovascular is issues, strokes, heart attacks, and dementia. So we've got to get that inflammation resolved. The good news is we have lots of really amazing new tools and technology to do that. Well, that is fantastic. And remember to floss, right? <laughs> it's like Flossing is still important. And we have, we have lots of other tools, for, primarily because only 7 to 9% of people floss daily. So, yeah. We oh, have man. Other things. That yeah. will work. Like a water pick? Will that work? Oh, well, it's, it's mostly the, the treatment. Yeah, you know, those treatments I was talking about with the trays. All right. So, Michelle, Dr. Michelle Huggy, how can we get in touch with you and your office? Our website is jacksonvillebeachdentist.com. Our phone number is 904-247-0111. And we are in Neptune Beach. Yep. And I found uh, when I was doing research, easy to, easy to definitely, uh, you know, in your browser, just Dr. Michelle Huckey, H-U-C-K-E, and uh, and your whole team came up and your website was extremely informative. So I really appreciate you uh, jumping on the conversation with us today about oral health and how it affects your overall health, because we definitely learned that airway and teeth have a lot uh, more in common than we ever thought. Absolutely. All, all right. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, same, same. Good, good talk. The conversation will continue um, next time on Millennium Physician Group Radio. Your healthcare journey is important to us, and our goal at Millennium Physician Group is to work together to achieve the best health outcome for you, and that starts with seeing your primary care provider. See our website for a full list of offices and providers at millenniumphysician.com. In good health, I'm Michelle McCormick. So long for now. <laughs>